Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this one I will show you how to model and sculpt these stylized barrels. So let's get started. I will start with the cube, change the sizes to kind of get a wooden plank look. This is gonna be enough. I will enable the lines so I can see the segments. I don't think we will need any X segments. Let's increase the Y. Y is important because I am going to bend that object, which means that I will need more resolution for the Z. Let's add on the one. I will press Alt, select cloner, change it to radial. Let's make it 12. I'm going to rotate these 90 degrees. And give some radius. I could also change the color. I don't like that but color. Now I will press Alt, select connect object because I will use a FFT deformer. But if you create a FFT deformer, you will see that the parent option will not be enabled. So this is the reason why I use the connect object. If I use that FFT under the connect, this option is enabled. I'm gonna with that select these points of the FFT and scale them I can invert these and scale them as well but I will lock the Y I can select them all and scale them all that looks fine let's let's keep that I will hide that FFT, go to my cube, switch to model mode, I'm gonna make it editable and duplicate that. Let's duplicate these four times because I want to give some randomness and some distortion to these planks. And the best way to do that is cloning these and cloner object will blend these for us. I'm gonna change my clone mode to random. I will select the first cube, see if she points mods. Same for the bottom. For the second cube, let's move these up, but you will get these shapes. This is because if you look at the FFT, it has a cage and these points are out of that cage. But if I say pit parent, this is gonna update the cage of the FFT. Now let's select all the cubes, go to top view, select these points, and push them on the x-axis so this is going to give them more redness and let's not forget to update the FFT deformer we can continue to add more randomness to these points but I am going to stop here I can right click on my connect object and say current state object and hide the first connect for object so I can go back and <clears throat> change some stuff if I make a mistake I'm gonna close these caps let's create sphere change it to hexadron let's lower it to something like 10 and make it editable delete the bottom points scale this to zero and scale them until you can't see the edges i will duplicate that now i can select them all and say connect objects and delete for the metal rings i can create any cylinder make it editable I'm gonna make a loop selection and invert the selection then delete this 
let's scale this then when it starts to touch the barrel i'm going to select these edges and scale them now i'm going to select them all right click extrude where is that yes turn caps on I will duplicate that and change my Y size to minus one. This is going to flip the object. Let's make it different than the other one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a loop selection and smooth these, scale these. Yeah, the low play is done, but we need to make this into one object, connect object and delete. I will rename that the low poly. Now I need to unwrap the UVs of the of that object. Let's switch to UV edit. Now I will select all the polygons. And it looks like I need to flip some of the normals, like these ones. Double click on that one say reverse normals and that one as well now i can select all go to automatic uv select angle and hit apply it did a decent job but not perfect you can see that we got all these little chunks but i want them as a whole to do that i will select them all one more time and increase my maximum distortion to like 50 and I will hit apply now it did a better job you can see that these are all now a hole we may need to change some of the polygons positions okay everything looks perfect now let's switch to standard mode I'm gonna duplicate that and hide this one. I will rename that to my poly. Let's switch to scope mode. So if I subdivide that and make sure that you select the high poly, if I subdivide that, you'll see that it's gonna get a lot smoother. We don't want that. I want to keep these edges sharp. So I will select sharp edges to do that i will go to selection phone break selection i will play with this angle until i select all the sharp edges right click select bevel let's make something like that not too much because i want to keep the edges sharp i will subdivide that to see results to see the result i need to switch to model mode yeah not bad we are at the level four i think we may need another level let's subdivide it one more time Perfect. Now I am gonna create a new layer. Rename that to scrape because I am gonna use that brush. Select that. Let's enable steady stroke. I'm gonna change the size. Sorry, I select wrong brush. Select scrape. Enable steady stroke. Change the size and i will be doing the same thing on these planks so these metal rings are blocking our view i'm gonna select these by double clicking on them go to selection and hide selected switch to model mode and continue to sculpt So I have done all the hard work and 
sculpted all of these planes. So if you find these sharp, you can create another layer. Let's name that smooth. Good smooth. Let's make it 200 and say float. It's gonna apply it smooth for the whole mesh. And the good part working with the layers that you can change the amount or strength of that layer. Let's make it something like 50. I will create another layer, name that knife to guest, right? I am going to use knife brush. I will change some of the settings. The most important one is the pressure. Click FX and enable distance. So that way you see that when I start to sculpt, the further away I move from the first point, my brush will fade away. Let's make it smaller and I'm going to lower the pressure to something like 15. Also, I will enable steady stroke. Let's make it, let's try to increase push. Yeah, that looks better. I will undo that. And this time I'm going to increase pinch. No, I think, I don't think we need to increase the pinch. Now let's start to add our cuts. Oh, let's make something similar for the bottom side. Now I am going to switch to pinch brush. Let's start with 20 to see what we get. So this is too sharp. Let's make it 5. And sometimes you may need to press shift to smooth some of the places, areas. But make sure that you set your pressure back to 100 or lower. Let's try 25. Draw back the pinch. Now I am going to create another knife layer. Knife 2. Select the knife. This time in the FX settings of the pressure, I am going to put that point over here and create a new one. And put it here. And let's increase the length. Now I will be adding these details. In this layer, I am going to lower the strength. I, I just want this to be a small detail. You can use pinch for this as well. Let's increase that strength. Yeah, that looks better. Now I'm going to create another layer. Let's name that dot. I'm going to use... Let's use inflate. I'll make the brush smaller. Press control. So I'm going to invert the brush. And I'm going to be adding these small dots.
Well, let's take a look at the top part. I'm going to create another layer. Let's name that cap. I'm going to select knife. Shapes like this. Then I am going to select pinch. Let's increase that pressure. So now I need to submit some of the areas. Now I'm going to go back to dot layer, select, inflate, and place these dots. Also, let's not forget to the metal rings. So let's switch to polygon mode, selection, show all. Let's continue to add these dots on this one as well. And now let's create our last layer gonna for the surface details. Let's run that surface. I will go to materials, create any material in the color channel. I'm gonna create a noise. Let's select something like turbulence. I will increase the cycles to 10 and let's make it bigger. You can turn off reflectance. I just need that color information. Now I will select repeat brush, go to attributes, stamp, go back to materials, select the material and hover over the attributes and put it over material tab. Now I can use that material as my stamp. Let's increase pressure. We will need a lot. Let's make a test. Oh, it's too much. And I don't think we need a uh, struck. Let's make it 100. Okay, that's enough. Of course, I'm not going to use that much. I will lower the strength. It's just going to give us small details. I can also use race brush. Okay, let's switch to standard mode. Let's enable this locally. So you can export this to Blender and create a normal map based on these two objects. Unfortunately, I can't make to that in Cinema 4D. I would really like to do that, but I have tested a lot of times and I don't know why, but I can't get a good baking, whatever I do. It may be because of that punk angle. If you are familiar with 3ds Max and Maya, they use smoothing groups and Cinema 4D uses funk tech. These may be the problem for the baking and Cinema 4D also don't have a cache system for baking. I am not exactly sure, but this, is, uh, this may be the problems. But you can use Blender to bake this, just import, export this. And you can find tutorials on the YouTube for low poly baking in Blender. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And I see you in the next tutorials. Bye.